Welcome to Thermal Energy Lesson 1.2, Investigating Hot and Cold. Hey, how fitting we have this uh, cold weather coming down upon us, and we're talking about thermal energy. And just wait till you see the video for today um, and what we're going to be investigating together. So uh, just like with all units, we uh, well, we started off with our... Um, pre-unit assessment, right? Um, and we're now jumping into our uh, anticipation guide. That's what it's called. Uh, and these are just some things to think about. And these are things we're going to be uh, considering and thinking about all unit long. And uh, we are going to be learning more and more about these topics in order to be able to answer some of these questions or respond to these statements um, in a much more knowledgeable way. So, Let's look at the first one. Temperature is the measurement of how hot or cold something is. Okay, great. What are you supposed to do? Write whether you agree or disagree, and please tell me something about why. Look at all this space there, all that glorious space. Don't just write agree. Don't just write disagree. Tell me why. Tell me why. Uh, number two, when something heats up, it moves faster, and when something cools down, it moves slower. Agree? Disagree? Why? Why? You For the why, you could also give me an example if you wanted. That'd be... That'd be yeah, that'd be good. Um, when something heats up, new energy is created. And when something cools down, energy is destroyed. And number four, hotter things have more energy than colder things. All right. Go ahead. Take some time. Read those statements. Uh, type out whether you agree or disagree. And tell me why or give me an example. All right. And then come on back to me. Next, we have a video. Yay, we all love videos. Um and I have attached this video to your lesson. It's also on my YouTube channel. Uh, but what I want you to do is watch this video uh, because you're going to be introduced to the problem that we're going to be investigating um, for Riverdale Middle School. I think it's Riverdale Middle School. Uh, so let's see what let's see what Kayla and Jesse are up to in this uh, in this adventure. So go ahead and watch that, and then come on back to me. Well, that was fun. I, I hope we get to find out more about what Kayla and Jesse discover and what they learn in their journey to understand those two heating systems better so that they can give Mr. Chang a recommendation. Do you think do you think he really wants their advice? I don't know. I don't know. It seemed like it. it seemed like he was genuine, huh? Yeah. Um, hey, let's actually take a look together at these two heating systems. And as we do, um, let's think of these questions. How are the heating systems similar and how are they different? What questions do you have about how the heating systems work and which heating system do you think will warm the school more during the winter and why? So um, we'll come back to these questions and I'm going to ask you these questions when we meet together. Uh, but here's the first heating system. Okay, so the morning air temperature, this is always going to be the same. It's going to be 11 degrees outside, right? Um, proposal number one, water heater system. Now, they're both using water, right? Right, yeah. The water heater in here, it gets heated to 39 degrees. So this is 39 degree water, and it's pumped throughout the school um, to, to warm up the school. Let's look at the second one. Hopefully I didn't cut out there. Proposal number two, number two groundwater system. So this one's a little bit different. Now, same morning temperature outside. Our groundwater... It's a larger reservoir, right? So there's more of it, and it's 30 degrees. Are we heating this water? We are not heating this water. This is just the temperature of the groundwater. It's constant at 30 degrees all year long, okay? And But the same idea, it gets pumped throughout the school. Um, it doesn't go back into the reservoir. It gets pumped out of the school, and then new groundwater is pumped in. Okay, let's look at this one again. Water gets heated up, pumped throughout the school, heated to 39 degrees. This uses a lot more water, but it's only 30 degrees, but same idea, pumped throughout the school and then pumped out. And then the next day, you start off with the same uh, temperature water again. All right. How are the heating systems similar and how are they different? I pointed out a few things. Maybe you can think of some more. What questions do you have about how the heating systems work? Yeah, what, uh, what are some questions that we might have about that? Um, I know I, I still have a few questions. And lastly, which heating system do you think will warm the school more during the winter? Again, I'm curious to hear your initial thoughts. 
about this. And we will talk about this as a class when we meet. Again, let's move on to our hands-on uh, investigating hot and cold things. There is no hands-on, although you can try this at home. Um, it does not take many materials. All you need is some hot water, some cold water, and some food coloring. And that's it. That's it. Uh, preferably a, like a, a glass or a jar that you can see through. Um, be careful about heating up that water. Obviously, you got to be careful around hot water. Um, but I have attached a video to today's lesson that you can uh, watch. It's also on my uh, Thermal Energy Playlist YouTube channel. Um, don't forget to subscribe. And I, I don't know what you're supposed to do. Uh, students keep trying to tell me how I'm supposed to promote my channel, but I don't know. Um, so watch the video. And then what I want you to do is, well, I, I'm sorry, before, before, uh, the first cup, what did they say you're supposed to uh, heat it to? We don't have temperatures, honestly, for um, these cups of water. You know what, let me get some temperatures really quick. I'll be right back. You know, honestly, I couldn't even really find. Um, let's say that the temperature of the cold water is 15 degrees uh, Celsius, please. So let's put 15 C. 15C, and the temperature of the hot water is, let's go ahead and say 45C. I think that'd probably be, that'd, that's pretty good. Um, probably pretty close, pretty accurate. Uh, the water that we see in the video is not boiling, so we'll just say 45C. Um, I predict that when I add food coloring to the water in the cups, the food coloring will. So we have these two, two cups, one filled with hot water, one filled with cold water. We're gonna put two drops of food coloring in each of the cups. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think that if the food coloring is going to spread out faster in the cold water, faster in the hot water, or is it going to spread out equally fast in the cold and hot water? Uh, go ahead and select one of those. And then, uh, then what I want you to do is watch the video. Watch the video, and I want you to answer this question right here. How did the temperature of the water affect the movement of the food coloring? Also, add um, just any observations that you have about the experiment itself, okay? Watch the video, answer this question, and then come back to me. All right. Last thing that we're doing is we are reflecting on the investigation. So our question today was, how is something different when it is warmer or cooler? Now, we could probably come up with all sorts of ideas about that, but we want to think about it uh, in terms of this experiment specifically. So... How did the experiment with the cold and warm water change your thinking about the investigation question? How is something different when it is warmer or cooler? Again, consider the experiment, answer this question, and then after that, you're done.